Good morning, boys and girls, and happy early Earth Day. So, tomorrow is actually Earth Day. Tomorrow actually represents the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So what does that mean? That means that 50 years ago tomorrow, um, we first invented Earth Day. And Earth Day is a day whenever you try to do things to protect the environment. Earth Day is a day whenever you try to do things to bond with nature, to bond with animals, to bond with the world around you. And right now, a lot of us are, we're staying at home right now, so it's kind of hard to get out and do some of the normal things that you would do on Earth Day. Usually, kids will go out and they'll help with recycling, or they'll go out and they'll pick up litter, things like that. But these days, it's going to be a little bit harder to find something to do. So maybe you could do some indoor crafts using recycled materials, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. Or maybe you could do something like maybe build a bird feeder for in your backyard. And today we have two books as usual. And the first book is called Planting a Rainbow. And this book is by Lewis Ellert. And the second book that we have I think you're gonna really like this one. It's really funny. It's called Trees Make Perfect Pets. And this book is by Paul Zajac. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Do you ever read a name and you're like, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's okay, you just do the best you can with it. And the pictures are by Kathy Gindron. I think I pronounced it right. But that's okay if I didn't, too. So we will start off reading the first book, Planting a Rainbow. This book has a really cool message to it. I hope you guys like it. Planting a Rainbow, written and illustrated by Lewis Ellert. Every year, Mom and I plant a rainbow. And it's cool because the word rainbow on here, it looks like a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. So there are these things that are called bulbs. So like these little things down here. So what they are is they're kind of like really big plant seeds and you plant them in the ground, and eventually they'll grow out to be big flowers, or big plants. And this one, you can see that there are a bunch of different colored ones. You can see these little popsicle sticks. These little popsicle sticks are all the colors of the rainbow. So, this person wants to plant a rainbow. So all these different colors. So there's a couple of different things here. We see a tiger lily, we see a tulip, we see an iris over here on the far side over there. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long. That's the thing about planting bulbs is that you don't get it right away. You have to wait on it. You have to be really patient. So here are the different seeds that they got. There's morning glories. I have morning glories at my house. I really like them. They sprout out early in the morning. So if you wake up, you can see them in the morning. But if you look at them in the afternoon, they're all closed up. There's cornflowers, there's marigolds, and there's daisies. You can see also this time there's a bunch of different colors. So we order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long for spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. So here they are, you see all the bulbs in the ground and you see how all these little bulbs, just like seeds, from all these little bulbs, you have all of these sprouts. You can see all of these cool different colored plants here. Then, it's time to go to the garden center to select some seedlings. Here we go. 
So they went off to the garden center and they got some little plants. So they have bulbs and they also have these little plants. And they have this really cool little wagon. They're gonna take them around in. And if you look right there, there's a rose bush. You can buy a rose bush where it's almost, it's almost full. So you just take this big rose bush and you dig a hole in the ground and you put it down in the ground and then you cover back up the roots with earth. We sow the seeds and set out the plants in the soil. So here we go. So you can see over here, there's a marigold, there's the little seeds. You can see there's the little morning glory seeds. You can see the rose bush right there. They have that down in the soil now. Yeah, there's lots of cool looking plants. And watch the rainbow grow. That's the cool thing about plants, but you have to have lots of patience. They don't happen right away. You have to be really nice to them. You have to water them. And some people even talk to them. <laughs> That's okay. The plants actually like it when you talk to them. So now you can see the plants are, they're growing bigger and bigger. And you see our rose bush over here. It's now got a bunch of little thorns on it. That's the thing about rose bushes. You have to be really careful with them. They have these beautiful flowers but they also have these thorns on them that can prick you. So it's good to be careful. Then you have your corn flower, and then right over here, you can see the iris. The iris is almost up. It's a beautiful looking little flower. So, and you remember what it said on the previous page, we sow the seeds and set out the plants and soil and watch the rainbow grow and grow. Here's the orange ones. Here's some red ones. And grow. There's some blue ones. There's some purple ones. And they grow and grow until they're full grown flowers. And now you can see this right here. You can see the rainbow. We're about to go through the rainbow over here. And you can see all the different flowers that are these different colors. So we have some red flowers. Like the rose. The rose on this one is red. And orange flowers. Like the poppy. The poppy is nice and orange. some yellow blooms like the daisy or the daffodils we grow something green so you can see the green stuff right here these are ferns a lot of people like to get these big ferns and they like to put them by their door here at Old Town Books we have some ferns that we just got that we put by the door so they're growing right now. Maybe whenever everything gets back to normal, you guys can come and see them. And some blue flowers. There's a bunch of pretty blue flowers. They don't have my favorite blue flower over here though. My favorite blue flower is the blue bonnet. Here in Texas, we have a lot of blue bonnets. I think they're really pretty. You can go and see whole fields full of blue bonnets. It's really pretty. And some purple flowers too. Look, we have the crocus, we have the violets, we have the iris, we have the pansy. We have a bunch of purple flowers here. All summer long, we pick them and bring them home. That's the great thing about having flowers out in your front yard, or having flowers is that you can pick them, and you can make a really nice, beautiful little flower bouquet, and you can put it, 
you can maybe give it to your big person, you can give it to your mom, your dad, or your big person. Or you can even just put them out on a dresser or out on the dinner table for everyone to enjoy. And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. See, it has a rainbow in that thing. So all these flowers together, they made a rainbow. They made a beautiful different colors of flowers all together. It looks just like a beautiful rainbow in the sky. Now, boys and girls, I want to show y'all the crafts. So the crafts this week, we had Miss Cindy. She made a really cool craft. So like I said, it's Earth Day. So what we're doing is we're reusing things that we have around the house to talk about nature. We're reusing things we have around the house to represent nature. So Miss Cindy made some really cool, and it's kind of heavy too, some really cool little cactuses. Look, these aren't real cactuses. These are just rocks that she got and she painted them green and she put some little some little white dots on it to where it's just like little little pricklies on it. And she painted some eyes on them. They're really cute. They look just like little people cactuses. And this one even has blue eyes. This one has brown eyes. This one has black eyes. And that's the cool thing about this. With these ones right here, you can take them and you can grab them. You can't do that with a real cactus. You can't do that at all, because it would hurt really bad. You'd be like, ah! It would hurt really bad. So she made these, and she also made one. So she put these in a nice little flower pot with just a bunch of rocks. You could probably do this at home if you're a big person that has a flower pot. She also thought maybe some people don't have a flower pot, but they do have rocks lying around. So we just got a little coffee cup here. And this one right here, ah! No, just kidding. <laughs> this one right here, she put some googly eyes on it. It's pretty cool. And Crystal, Miss Crystal made a bee. Check it out. It's really cool. So her bee, she just got a plain old toilet paper roll. I'm sure we all have plenty of these lying around now, or maybe not. She just got a regular toilet paper roll and she put some, some little eyes on it, some googly eyes. And she has some little wings on it, some little antennas on it. And so if you have a toilet paper roll lying around, you could do this, but don't go and empty all the toilet paper off the toilet paper roll to do it. <laughs> That's probably not a good idea. You might get in trouble. <laughs> I wouldn't do it at all. Cool. And next time we're going to be reading two different books. And these books that we're going to be reading, we're going to be reading books about pets. Some of you might have pets at home and some of you might not have pets. I have a pet at home. I have a little dog. And my little dog's name is Phoebe. She's a little bitty Yorkshire Terrier. So she's a little bitty dog with really long, beautiful hair. And I thought maybe we'd read some books about pets. So the first book that we're gonna read, it'll be called New Pup. It's a Bearstain Bears book. I know a lot of you out there probably read some Bearstain Bears books. There are tons of them. The Bearstain Bears books are really cool. I think you guys might like this one. And we also have, What Pet Should I Get? This one is a Dr. Seuss book. So it's the same guy that wrote The Lorax, or the same guy that wrote Green Eggs and Ham. This is his book on pets. And he has some really cool looking, kind of weird looking pets in it. I think you'll like it. But that's next time. Now, we're going to read Trees Make Perfect Pets. I love this book. This book is really funny. Trees Make Perfect Pets. Words by Paul 
Zajac, I think, and pictures by Kathy Gindrum. Birthdays are the best days for wishes, and on this birthday, Abigail wished for a pet. There she is, she's blowing out her birthday candles, and she's sitting there thinking, what do I want? She wants a pet. Do you know what type of pet she'll get? Spoiler. <laughs> her brother wanted a dog. They are man's best friend. Her father suggested a hamster. They're so fluffy. Her mom thought a bird would be nice. They make beautiful music. Abigail had another idea. I want a tree! <laughs> Look at it, she's so, I want a tree. And everybody's just looking at her like, what's up with that? That's crazy. A what? They all gasped, a tree. They're the greatest pets in the world. But a tree isn't a pet, her mom argued. Of course it is, Abigail said. It's quiet, easy to take care of, and you can name, and can you name another pet that actually helps you breed? Her family was stumped. Abigail ran to the car and said, let's go adopt a tree. They're all still looking at her. And look at that, she forgot her cake. I don't think I would forget my cake. She's so excited. <laughs> Abigail searched the nursery. So a nursery is a place where you can go and you can uh, get plants, you can get flowers, you can get trees, you can get that sort of thing. Abigail searched the nursery and found her tree. He looks friendly. It's a tree. They're all friendly, her brother said. There's your brother. I'll name you Fido. You and I are going to be best friends, she said. Her brother's looking like, oh my gosh. But she's found her little tree. She really seems to like it. Abigail and Fido were always together. Here they are. They're doing some laundry. Looks like they're having a little party there with all of her other stuffed animals. Shouldn't trees sleep outside? Her father asked. Fido would be lonely without me. So she even sleeps with the tree next to her bed. It's kind of crazy, but it's really cool. I admire her determination. Abigail took good care of Fido. She watered him, sang to him. See, you can even sing to a tree. You can talk to them, you can sing to them. They loved going out on long walks. Yeah. She takes the tree for a walk. What are you doing? Her neighbor asked. I'm taking Fido for a walk. That's a tree. Trees don't go for walks. This one does. He's my pet. I love this picture. So she's arguing with this little boy over here. She's taking her tree out for a walk with her wagon. And look at the cat. The cat's just looking like, what's up with that? That's really funny. A tree is not a good pet. Cats are much better pets. Oprah Whiskers can cuddle. That poor cat, he's not cuddling that cat. <laughs> that cat's like, I don't want to be here. Fido loves a good hug, so she hugs her tree. Oprah Whiskers can do tricks. 
She's giving him a high five. Stay, fight him. Good boy. I love this picture. This is my favorite one in the book. She's like, stay. Good boy. <laughs> it's really funny. It's very creative. Oprah Whiskers keeps me warm at night. Fido keeps me cool during the day. Hmm. Have it your way, her neighbor said. But a tree isn't a real pet. She doesn't care. She doesn't care at all. She loves her tree. She doesn't care what people say. She doesn't care what people think. She loves her tree. Abigail took Fido to the dog park. She knew it was important for pets to socialize. But some didn't agree. So she met this, this police officer there. And, and look at her. She has her tree and there's a police officer. I'm sorry. This park is for dogs. Fido is a dogwood. That doesn't count. He's very friendly. His bark is worse than his bite. <laughs> it's very clever. Sorry, actual pets only. <laughs> really funny. You can even see that that Dalmatian dog is looking like, what's happening here? Oh, oh, and even, I didn't see it till now. That dog, he's also looking, what's happening here? Abigail didn't care what other people thought of Fido. She didn't mind that Fido couldn't go where other pets went. She didn't mind that Fido was only good at fetching kites and didn't give them back. She didn't mind that he sometimes had accidents. There he is. He had an accident. <laughs> you got water everywhere. So whenever you put water in plants, sometimes it just drips out the bottom. <laughs> None of that mattered because Fido was her pet. But, like all pets, Fido grew. Now he's getting bigger and bigger. So she probably has him on the chair inside, but he's growing out the window. Now there's all of these birds that are coming to visit him. Walks became more difficult. Fido was a tight fit in her room at night, and the breakfast table became really crowded. There's leaves in my cereal again. <laughs> Honey, Fido is too big to live in the house. He needs a permanent home, her mom said. But Fido is my friend. Where would he live? Outside, a tree belongs in the ground. Her father explained. So here he is at the breakfast table, <laughs> getting leaves and everything. It's very funny. <laughs> Abigail's heart broke. Fido had grown too big for the house. Keeping him inside, keeping him inside, was not fair to him. There she is. She's kind of sad. She wants to keep him inside, but she knows it's not a good idea. She found a sunny spot in the yard and dug him a new home. But Abigail wasn't ready to let go. See, so she found a spot in the front yard. She dug him a hole, and then they put him out there in the front yard. Worried that Fido felt 
felt scared and alone. Abigail kept him company under the stars. There she is. She's hanging out with him. Looks like she's reading him a good night story. Have you ever done that? Have you ever called, crawled up in a tree and just hung out? Have you ever taken a book up in a tree and just kind of hung out and, and read up there in the tree? It's fun. I've done it lots of times. When morning came, Abigail woke up to birds singing. Mom, Dad, come quick. Her family rushed outside to see what the commotion was. Fido made new friends. There he is with all of his new friends. I guess a tree can be man's best friend, her brother said. Look, there's, now he's outside. Before he just had one friend, he just had the little girl. But now he's got all of these new friends. He's got a squirrel, he's got a bunch of different birds. And it, and it looks like a little chipmunk or another squirrel too. He's got all sorts of new friends. Abigail hugged Fido. A tree is everyone's best friend. Look at the cat. The cat's even up there now. The cat even has a friend with the tree. The end. I hope you guys liked it today. I really like these stories. I really like that the trees make perfect pets. I thought it was a really funny book. It was very creative. It was very interesting. The pictures were really cool. So, Please come and join me next time. And please, if you can, in the next day or two, try to think about something to do for the environment. Try to maybe reuse something around your house to make a craft with. You can watch Crystal's craft video. See how she did those crafts. And just maybe do something. Get outside if you can. Do, do, do something. Maybe hug a tree. Maybe do something cool like that. And I'll be back on Friday. So I look forward to seeing you guys then. And until then, just keep reading. Bye-bye.